Grab your Bible, grab your study notes. Let's dive into the word of the Lord. I believe it's something that God wants to say to us on tonight. I'm going to be teaching, I'm going to be preaching with this thought in our hearts and our minds. It's really a question. It's a question. Not so fast. 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 It's, it's really a question. It's a question. 2019, we've deemed um, the year of acceleration. We've said that this is our year of acceleration. We've said that God has spoken this to us. Um, God has told this to us here in our local church. And we just know without a shadow of a doubt that this is what it is that God desires to do. Um, I'm grateful that any time the people of God come together um, and as relates to in a corporate setting, God always gives us a theme. He always gives us something that he desires to do in our lives as a corporate body. And God tells us something that he wants to do in our lives as individuals. And every single time God has declared or God has spoken something over this house, we've seen the manifestation of it. Every, every single time from the year of manifestation to the year of advancement to the year of expansion to the year of maturation. Now the year of acceleration. That that is exactly what it is that God desires to do. So that's why it's so important that you be in tune to the house that God has planted you. Not be potted in the house. It's one thing to be potted, but you have to be planted. Be, to be potted, you can be transferred from here and to there and you hear there and everywhere. But to be planted is, is to be rooted. It's to be grounded. Uh, because whatever it is that God is desiring to do in the house, that's what he desires to do in your life. So 2019 is our year of acceleration. Somebody say acceleration. It's been our year of acceleration. Let me remind you of what acceleration is. It's just simply to bring about at an earlier time, uh, to cause to move faster, uh, to hasten the progress or development, uh, to gain speed, uh, to grow or to increase. This is what accelerate means. It means to bring about at an earlier time. And I don't know about you, maybe it's just me, but I'm looking for God still to do some things in my life or to bring some things about at an earlier time. Uh, there's some things that God has promised me. There's some things that God has shown me. There's some things that God has told me, spoken to me in my spirit. The Bible says that I have not seen nor ear have heard neither that has an entrance into the heart of man, those things that God has prepared for us. But the next verse says, but he has revealed it to his children by the spirit of God. So I don't know what God has spoken to you in the steel of the night and told you what it is that he's going to do. But when we posture ourselves properly in the things of God, he can bring those things about at an earlier time. I don't know. That's what my, that's what my faith is. I believe that God can cause some things to move fast in my life. I'm leaving God the way he can cause the progress or the development maybe may, have you ever been in a room that you know you have not been qualified to be in have you ever been sitting at a table and know that you have no business sitting there have you ever been in a place to where you know good and well that you you're above your pay grade but because of the favor of God and because of the hand of God on your life he can cause things the, pro the progress and the development in your life to gain some speed and that's what I'm looking for I got one half a clap over here that's what I'm looking for God to do I'm looking for him to cause me to grow and to increase in my life. I'm looking for him simply to accelerate. Let me give you some synonyms. I, I've given this to you several times. I'm going to give it to you again. Look, look what, what, what accelerate is. It is the speed to hasten, uh, to hurry, to quicken, to shake up, to step up. To, uh, so swiftness and some other related words uh, is to drive or to impale. And that's what God wants to do. It, it, so, so for so long, uh, our spiritual journey and our spiritual walk has been in neutral. And, I, and I've learned a long time ago that there is no neutrality in Christianity. There's no neutrality. There's no neutral on your vehicle. Hopefully on your vehicle, you have a drive, you have a reverse, and you have a park. Uh, but, and then you also have a neutral. But there is no neutral in God. If you're standing still, that means you're backing up. If you're, if you're not growing, that means that you're decreasing. Come on. There's, there's no neutral in God. No, no, things are not about the same. If somebody would have asked you about your spiritual journey and you say, well, things are about the same as they were last month. Things are about the same as they were earlier this year. Things are about the same as they were two years from now. If things are just about the same, they're not just about the same. That means that you're in decline. That means that you're in decrease because there is no neutral in God. Things don't ever stay the same in God. Either you're going forward 
forward or you're backing up. And I don't know about you, but I'm accelerating. I'm, I'm speeding up. I'm hasting. I'm hurrying. I'm quick. And I'm, I'm shaking up and stepping up. I, I'm getting ready to drive and impale some things. And that is what God is desired to do for us in our lives and in our local church. So I'm asking, that's why I'm asking you a question uh, tonight, this last Thursday night of the year. Man, I thought I was going to have to be hosing y'all down because y'all going to be so excited tonight. This last Thursday in the year, God has kept us for 51 Thursdays. And now here on the 52nd Thursday, here it is. We, 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 we ought to be crunk. We, we ought to be excited. We ought to be bound and bound. I don't know what generation you're from, but you, you ought to be excited about what it is that God is doing in your life. And, and maybe this is why we're not so excited because when we look at our life, this is supposed to be the year of acceleration. But then when I look at my life, things aren't moving. Not, not so fast. <laughs> not, not so fast. Acceleration. Not so, y'all look at me just like Noonday did. Lord, I thought y'all was going to be a little bit better. Noonday was like, <laughs> looking at me like that too. It's okay, it'll make, it'll make sense in a moment. Because here when you look at our life, we're supposed to be accelerating. We're supposed to be moving fast. But when we look at our lives, it, it, let me ask you a question. Is it, is it not so fast? Is it not so fast? Is things not moving so fast? And here, maybe we can talk about some things and try to discover why it's not moving so fast. So maybe we can pick up the speed uh, because we are literally uh, seven days away um, from our 21 days of prayer and consecration. Literally seven days away from our 21 days of prayer and consecration. Every year, uh, we take the beginning part of the year and we, and we spend those first 21 days or we take 21 days and we spend that time in prayer and consecration. Consecration. I think it would be robbery for us to come together this last Thursday night of the year and me not equip you, me not empower you and get you ready for this time of prayer and consecration. Uh, because if I don't, whenever the second comes, that's when we start in our, our prayer and consecration. Whenever the second comes, you're going to look like and act like somebody knocked the wind out of you when we start talking about fasting. You're going to say, fat, not, not so fast, not so fast. I'm not going to be, not so, now you got it. That's all right now. Come on, yeah. I'm finally throwing out. Come on, help me out. Not so fast. Here, can I tell you? No, I'm not finna fast. I don't know what you're talking about. But no, I want us to be prepared for what it is that God is trying to do in our lives as individuals. And I want us to be prepared and what it is that God wants to do in our lives as a corporate body. Let's dive into it because I got a lot of ground to cover. Look at the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 58, verse number one. The prophet, God tells the prophet, he says, God told me to cry aloud and do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob what? Their sins. Here the eagle eye prophet, he was told by God, charged by God to cry aloud to the people of God the way he can be able to give them their state, that really give them where they are in their life, not the whole back. And I'm grateful. I'm always thankful to be in a posture. You should be grateful. You should be uh, thankful the way you're always connected to a house that where we don't sugarcoat the truth, but no, we give you the truth, but we give it to you in love. We give you the truth in love. I don't know about you. I don't want to be heading for disaster. I don't want to be heading for destruction. I don't want to be headed in a particular place in my life thinking that I'm doing all right. But God is saying, no, there's something that you're missing. There's something that you're lacking. And I'm so glad God will show me. This is what Isaiah said. He says, cry loud. God tells them to cry loud and lift up your voice like a trumpet. Don't hold back, but show them and tell them what is going on. And this is what's going on. In the life of God's people. Look at Isaiah 58 and 2. It says, yet they act so pious. It's on the screen. It says, yet they act so pious. They come to the temple every day and seem delighted to learn all about me. Listen to the indictment on the people of God. God said they come to the house of God acting as if they want to know me better. They come to the house of God. They got their Bibles. They got their tablets. They have their study notes and they're filling the blank. And they're acting as if they want to learn of me and know who I am. And the Bible said they act like a righteous nation that would never abandon the laws of, of its God. Here it is. They asked me to take action on their behalf. Here it is. Pretending. They want me to be near or pretending they want to be near me. God is saying this is the indictment of the people of God. They come acting as if they want me. But God is saying they don't want to want me anywhere near them. Can I tell you that nothing messes up our lives or wrecks our lives like the presence of God? 
or like the conscience of God. Oh, y'all are super safe. Y'all don't know nothing about it. You ain't never been driving nowhere that you know you had no business going. And you all of a sudden think about the Lord. And you like, well, God, you just going to have to forgive me. Yeah. And you, you've never been thinking about going and plotting and scheming all day long. As soon as you get in your car, here go a gospel song. Come on. And you're trying to figure out well, where this came from. I thought I was listening to 101.5. Where this came from. And uh, God has a way. Come on here. Nothing wrecks your life. Nothing can, can thwart your plans like the presence of God or the conscience of God and this is what the prophet is saying the prophet is saying that there are a group of people that act as if they want to be close to God they act as if they want to be in the presence of God but God say they don't want me anywhere near them because when I come near to them I invoke a change on their life that's what you and I ought to be looking for anytime I come into God's presence I'm looking to be different I'm to look to change God doesn't come in my life to keep me the same way but no God stretches me God develops me God grows me in fact God comes to accelerate every area of my life he said they act like they want to know me but they don't really want to know me they have a form of godliness but they are denying the power thereof they're acting as if they want to be around me they're doing all their Christian things they're saying all the right things they're saying praise the Lord they're saying they're blessing highly favor they're saying this and saying that but God is saying no because if they really wanted me they'll have me this is what the indictment is on the people of God in Isaiah's day and it's the same thing going on in our day look at verse 3 Isaiah 58 3 says here's the people's response so this is what Isaiah is telling them why have we fasted and you see it not with fasting come on you you edit in and edit out anything you like you say fasting you can say prayer you can say giving you can say whatever you do for the kingdom of God I'm doing all this stuff for God but God don't see me I'm fasting, I'm praying, I'm teaching, I'm preaching, I'm serving, I'm doing all this, but it seems as if God does not see me. Here, they, they're complaining because it's almost as if God has not noticed them. I, I don't know about you, but that's that's how some of the 2019 believers act. We strain together two or three Thursday nights, and all of a sudden, we want God just to move on my behalf. We tie two or three times, and all of a sudden, I'm open the floodgates of heaven. We and we want we want it to rain. <laughs> Come on. We just we change our life for a New York second, a New York minute, and here we want everything to turn in our behalf. And that is not how it works. Look, look what he says. He says, We we fasted God, he didn't see me. We have humbled ourselves, and you take no knowledge of it. It seems as if they're working and they're serving, and God is not paying them any attention. Look what it goes on to say. Behold, in the day of your fast, here's the problem. You seek your own pleasure. He says, in the day of your fast, in the day of your religious activity, you're not really doing it for me, but you're doing it for yourself. Do you know you can serve God for you? I thought night before Christmas was two days ago, but here we go again. <laughs> can, can I tell you that, that you know you can serve God for you? You know, there's some people that only do what they do in the things, as relates to the things of God, just to appease their conscience. They have a guilty conscience about some things they've done. They got a guilty conscience about some things that maybe they're participating in, and they have a, 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 spec, a spotty past that they're not proud of, and they're simply serving God just for themselves so they can feel good about it but that is not what my service to God is about it's not about me appeasing my own conscious mind but no it's about me doing what I'm doing for him it's all about him it's not to try to make myself feel good it's not the least I can do I got to do this because of this and I got to do this no you don't work for God you don't do all these things to try to earn God's favor but no because you already experienced his grace because you've already experienced his love it's the least that I can do it's my most reason service to do what it is that I do he said you you're doing this for your own pleasure and you're oppressing your, your workers all along so this is what we're going to be doing as it as relates to talking about consecration as it relates to fasting this is what I'm trying to prepare your heart and your spirit for here in the days to come here fill in the blank you're first filling the blank come on so you get to feel something in. here it is the first one is just simply fasting that's just the definition fasting fasting what is fasting is laying aside it is the laying aside of food for a period of time. When the believer, listen to me good, is seeking to know God in a deeper experience. 
This is what fasting is. Fasting is my desire to want to know God more, right? This verse down, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul says, I want to know him. I desire to know him in a better way, in a greater way. And this is what fasting does. Fasting helps me to know God in a deeper experience. Fasting is me divorcing myself from my normal, regular schedule program and me learning of God and getting in God's presence. It also, because keep going in definition, it is to be done as an act before God in the privacy of one own, one's own pursuit of God. It is a personal commitment. Don't miss this. A personal commitment to denounce the natural to invoke the spiritual. This is what fasting is. It is a personal commitment. Somebody say commitment. This is what I want from you all, truth and love. I want your commitment. It's a personal a personal commitment, meaning that you can't ride on my commitment, and I can't ride on your commitment. You can't ride on your spouse's commitment, but you have to make a personal commitment that as we do these 21 days of prayer and consecration, you're going to make a commitment that you're going to fast, that you're going to sacrifice, that you're going to do something as relates to your own personal pursuit of the things of God. It's a commitment listen to this to denounce the natural to invoke the spiritual that's what fasting is fasting is denouncing the natural denouncing those things that 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 naturally come to us to say God I want you to invoke my life I want you to invade my life with your spiritual blood that's what we do when we're fasting it's a reframing of food it is for me getting myself my body and my mind and my spirit in a posture the way God can work in me and God can work through me Let, let's look at fasting again let me give you the Hebrew word for fasting Hebrew terms here it is to afflict oneself this is, this is fasting to afflict oneself it's built in it it's built in pain in the definition, affliction is not, so it's nothing fun. It's nothing enjoyable. It is to afflict oneself. Here it is. Look at the Hebrew definition. Not to eat bread. To humble oneself. Now, now I know y'all kind of deep. Y'all deep. We'll, we'll get to the deep stuff in a minute. And I know y'all fast from, from, from Facebook. And I know y'all fast from, uh, from, from going to the mall. I know y'all fast from all this stuff. But I'm a biblicist. And this is a Bible teaching, Bible believing church. So it's, it's, it's truest form. It is most, 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 if you drill, drill it down, fasting is fasting from food. If you drip, now we get all that other stuff in a second. Yeah, that's why we say fasting and consecration. We get all this other stuff, but but we it, it's real easy for me just to be just to soothe my mind and my conscience to put my phone down, and, and I may need to fast from all that stuff. I may need to abstain from all of that, but that's not in its truest form. That's not what fa- that's that, that's not that's not what fasting is. That's not what fasting is. All right, Amen. Somebody, all right. It is to uh, it is to afflict. It is to afflict one. Self. Look with the Hebrew. It says here, y'all argue with y'all argue with God because he says not to eat bread. It, it don't say nothing about anything else. It said not to eat bread, not not to consume any bread, to humble oneself. So this is what fasting is. Fasting is literally to afflict myself, uh, not to eat bread, and to humble myself. I I, I love something because here. Whenever it is that I'm fasting, I, I love I love what, uh, what what Jensen Franklin says about fasting. He says literally creating a space for God to fill. When, when I fast here, this is this is this is literally creating a space for God. So so as I as I denounce food, as I denounce those things that I normally would do, and we'll get to all the other stuff in a minute. We'll get the entertainment, we'll get the social media, we'll get to all of that. But let me deal with this from a, from a, from the standpoint that I'm doing, trying to build my case here. And here is literally trying to create a space that God can feel. And this is what I'm doing when I'm fasting. I'm saying, God, my 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 belly is not my God. You are my my entertainment is not my God you are I'm creating a space for you to feel in my busy life everything is bidding for my time everything is bidding for my attention my phone just keep going off and going off and going off and going off everything every notification every email every this and every that and everything is bidding for my attention and my when, when I get a little hunger I feel a little bit of hunger pain and it's telling me it's time to eat it's time you'll stop whatever you're doing it's time for you to grow up time for you to snack time for you to do whatever but what fasting does fasting say no 
I'm going to make a space in my life so God you can feel it I want you to live in me I want you to abide in me I want your presence so in my life that nothing else even matter it's not my food it's not my hunger pain it's not my headache it's not my tablet not my phone going off but God you are in charge of my life fasting is literally me emptying myself I'm emptying myself you know why we're not moving so fast because some of us full of ourselves y'all go help me we full of we're too full of us we're too full of our flesh we too full of our emotion we're too full of our feeling but when when I fast I'm emptying out myself and I'm saying fill me up yes sir until I overflow I don't need no prayer I'm gonna uh, I don't know the words but anyway I, I need God to fill me up this is, what I, this is what I'm doing. I'm asking God to, to fill me up. This is what fasting is about. Look at what Leonard Ravenhill said about, about fasting. Listen to me very closely. The modern church has moved a long way from the early church. Y'all listening? The early church had its upper room with its fire. We have our supper room with its smoke. We've come a long way. Nothing wrong with feasting, but certainly, my friend, there's something wrong with feasting if we know nothing about fasting. Come on, we, we know we know about feasting. We know about grubbing. And as I said, take it from, come on, I'm the self-appointed captain of the greedy committee. Come on here. I'm the self-appointed captain. I, I know I'm greedy. Y'all ain't going to help me here. And so I know there's nothing wrong with feasting, but it is something wrong with feasting when I don't know anything about fasting, when I don't know anything about me humbling myself if I don't know anything about me afflicting myself if I don't know anything about me putting myself in a posture to where God can get a handle on my life the where I can do things in a way that's pleasing unto him I got to learn how not to seek my own pleasure but it's about seeking the will and the presence of God if either listen to me y'all either we believe God's word or we don't Either we believe that God is absolutely positively in control of our lives or we don't. If we really believe that, then why aren't we giving him the handles? Why aren't we giving him the steering wheel of our lives if he's really in charge of our lives? Look, look at this next point. Boy, y'all quiet tonight. I guess y'all thought we was coming for another nativity message or something. I ain't know. I don't know. But look, 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 look at your next thing on the note. Look at this. While, while fasting, here we go with the consecration. While fasting... Limit entertainment. See somebody buzzing now. While, while fasting, limit entertainment. And replace those activities with spiritual things. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You mean to tell me I got to pray and actually read the word? Get out of town. <laughs> this, this is what fasting is. While fasting, I should limit. I'm not saying that you shouldn't come off. If you, if, if social media is an issue for you, do what you need to do. If, if, if shopping is an issue for you, do what you need to do. But while I'm fat, that, that's in a natural. And whether we're on a corporate fast or not, you got to know your buzzwords. You got to know those things that bother you. And you got to guard your life and insulate your life the way you can be who God has called you to be. But while we're doing a corporate fast, you should limit your entertainment. And replace your entertainment with spiritual things such as such as praying and reading the word. And this is what helped me because I just told you I'm the captain of the greedy committee. So when, as soon as I say I'm going to fast, I'm one hour in my fast and I feel like I'm about to die. I, I just do. Come here, ain't nobody gonna be honest with me. I just feel like I'm finna die. And I be like, man, oh my God, I'm not gonna make it. And I be, oh, oh, what time is it? Oh, it's only 10 o'clock. Oh my God, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. So what has helped me oh, oh, down through the years, I replay that time I when, when I get hungry, here it is. I go for my bread. I go for the word of God. And when you begin to feast on the word of God, God will fill you up. You're gonna get hungry, especially if you just starting out if you don't fast on a regular basis you're going to be hungry your vision gonna be blurry you, your mind gonna be all discombobulated you're gonna get hot and feel like if I don't eat nothing I just feel like I'm gonna lose somebody called the ambulance or something come on you're gonna feel all of that but you're gonna be all right you just ate yesterday you're gonna be all right you just yesterday you just ate yesterday you're gonna be we we gonna be all right but when you start feeling those things, this is when you go and talk. I feel, oh, I guess I ain't the only greedy person here. I got a couple of greedy folks. When you feel those things, that's when you got to go and talk to God. 
You replace those times that you normally will be eating, normally will be doing all those things, and you, and you spend time with God. Fasting is not easy. Fasting is not fun. Fasting, it is supposed to cause physical weakness. It is, it is literally supposed to weaken my flesh. And when, I, when my flesh is being weakened, my spirit man is becoming stronger. This is what fasting is about. It's literally, and what God is training me, is di he's disciplining me to let me know if I can tell my flesh no when it comes to food. I can tell my flesh no when it comes to cussing you out. I can tell my, my flesh no when it comes to having sex outside of marriage. I can tell my flesh no when it comes down to drinking and smoking and any other thing you want to fill in the blank when I can control my body and say, no, you don't own me first. Corinthians 9 27 I got to bring my body under subjection when I can teach my body not how to dug it only but if I can teach my body not how to eat when it's telling me to eat then I can be able to get the victory in every other area of my life come on I don't know about you I want the victory in every area of my life I just don't want to be good in the things of God in this area and never get the victory over here but I want to get the victory in every area of my life and fasting helps me obtain the victory fasting is something that all of us need to need to engage in. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let, ge genuine fasting here. Fill in the blank. Genuine fasting draws you to God. It'll get better in a minute. I, I, I guess it will. I don't know. It's on y'all. I'm all right. Uh, ge genuine fasting draws you to God. It's a drawing. It's a drawing. It's a drawing. Here, here, here. God is um, not present. He's at every place at every time. But there are times that where he does not manifest himself because we're not looking for him. Because we're not acknowledging his presence. You've heard me tell this story a thousand times. And I'm going to tell you another thousand times. You try pastoring uh, for, for several years and talking to the same group of people multiple times a week. You're going to tell the same stories over and over again too. Come on here. He already told us that. Well, you, you try doing it and see how many stories you got. Come on. So here, so just li li listen to this story so again and, and, and respond like it's the first time you heard it. Oh, OMG. So, so listen to this. The Lord dropped this in my spirit. My sister-in-law tells a story of her children coming to her and saying, Mama, we want to hear God the way you hear God. They live in a shotgun house. They got on one end of the room. She's on the other end of the room. They cut on, they cut on the vacuum cleaner. They cut on the microwave. They cut on the television. They cut on all the noise in the room. She's on one end of the room. She's on the other. And the children on the other end of the room, rather. And she's mouthing something to them. But she, they can't hear her because of all of the noise. So she begins to point at all the appliances. And the more appliances they turn off, that's the more clearly they heard her voice. She was saying, I love you but they couldn't hear her for all of the noise and this is what fasting does fasting cuts out all of the noise in our life you saying you feel like you're away from God you feel like God is not speaking to you fasting draws us to God it pulls us into its presence yeah, yes it does fasting pulls us into its presence Gen genuine fast next one genuine fast is an invitation it's an invitation yeah, yes it is God is saying Matthew 11 28 God is saying come unto me all you that labor and are what? Heavy laden. And I'll give you what? I, I give you rest. Come on, you feel like you about to throw in a towel. You feel like you're at your wit's end. You feel like you can't make it. You're overworked. You're overwhelmed. God is saying, come on, it's an invitation. I'm here to help you. I'm here to sustain you. I'm here to do what you need to do. I'm here, I'm here to help you over the hump. Genuine fasting is an invitation. I love what Moses said. Read it when you get a chance. In Exodus 33, verse 21, Moses asked God to show me your glory. God said, I can't do that, brother Moses. can't let you see my glory. He said, listen, this is one of my favorite verses. He said, but there's a place besides me. Good God. He said, there's a place beside me that you can climb into the cleft of the rock and you can find and you can experience my glory. And that's what God is saying. I'm calling you truth and love. I'm wooing you truth and love. I'm inviting you because there's a place besides me. Oh, my friend, because there's something I want to show you. There's something I want to do in Jacksonville. There's something I want to do in your family. And I'm inviting you to come. There's a place. There's the place as the place besides me let's keep going Whew. when when we when we here let's look at the next one i'm just giving you some principles about fast i'm just trying to help you so on the january 2nd you won't be looking all cray cray when we sign when sign the fast then we buy we on day 19 and he's talking about, i guess i'm going on try <laughs> let, let's keep going look 
when we, when we genuinely fast, God gives us the grace to do it. Amen. Yes, he does. Fasting is not God putting us in a submission move. Uh, come on, I had, I, had to, I had to shift in my mindset when it comes to this. I had to shift because when, when, when I first started fasting, it was like, oh, my God, I got to fast. Oh, no. Oh, another three-day fast. Oh, oh y'all going to act like y'all saved. Y'all so saved. I need a little bit of y'all Holy Ghost. Hey, y'all just, oh, y'all just be, we, ooh, he's saying the fact. Y'all just be, y'all just all excited. No, oh, no. No, that's not what fasting is. God literally gives us a grace to fast. What am I saying? The Holy Spirit, watch me closely. The Holy Spirit partners with us when we fast. Anytime you desire to do something good and do something in the will of God, the Spirit of God partners with you. He will help you in what it is that you're doing. You, it's not a drug. It's not a, a, a making. It's not a forcing. But the God say, but God said that my spirit will help you. Look at Philippians chapter 1 verse number 6. Look what it says. Philippians 1 6. I am sure of this, Paul says, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Look, if I, if I say, if I'm making a commitment, say commitment. If I make a commitment to say I'm going to go on this 21 day prayer and fasting and consecration and I'm making that commitment, God said, if you got enough faith to start it, I got enough grace to help you finish it. If you got enough grace, enough faith, if you got enough faith to say that I'm going to go out and I'm going to do this, God said, I'll, I'll be with you. I'll do what I need to do. But you got to, you got to, want, you got to want to do it. Somebody said that. You got to want to do it. You got to want to do it. Genuine fasting. I'm rolling. Genuine fasting is an act of worship. This is a topic. I'm just taking this topic of fasting and just walking through the word. Uh, genuine fasting is, is, is an act of worship. Yes, it is. It's worship. Not just not me just extending my hands. Not just when the praise team is singing. That's, no, 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 no. G genuine fasting is worship. Do you, do you know when you work or at your job, you work you ought to work as if it's worship. You work as unto the Lord. Everything we do, when we do it as unto the Lord, it is worship. Look, look at Paul. Paul says in Romans 12, 1, he says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers. By the mercies of God, here it is, to present what? your body. When, when I'm fasting, I'm presenting my body before the Lord as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Look what he says. I love what he says in the English standard, which is your spiritual worship. This is worth. It's the least that I can do to present my body unto God. As good as you've been to me, God, you mean tell me I can't miss one meal? As good as you've been to me, God, how you kept my family and kept my children, how you kept my mind, how you got me living better than I've ever lived, you got me driving better than I ever, I've ever driven before. And you mean to tell me I can't give you a little sacrifice? But no, God, it's my spiritual worship. This is what fasting is. I'm offering up to God and I'm saying, God, I want you to accept my sacrifice. Oh, my God. I, I, I said the fasting draws us to God. Look what Jesus' response was to John the Baptist's disciples. Matthew 9, verse 14. Look what it says. One day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, Why, do, why don't your disciples fast? He said, why don't, they, why don't your disciples fast like we do and like the Pharisees do? Verse 15, Jesus replied, look what he says, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating the groom? He says, of course not. But someday the groom will what? Be taken away from them. And then they'll fast. What, what are Jesus saying? I, I just said that when we genuinely fast, it draws us to God. Jesus is saying that my disciples don't need to fast because I'm here with them. I'm here with them. But when I'm gone away, then they'll be able to fast. They'll be able to draw us nearer. And can I tell you, this is why many of us are not experiencing the celebration anointing in our life. This is why we seem like we just stuck and keep going around in circles and circles and circles because we're not invoking and pulling on the presence of God. Look what John Piper said about the presence of God. Oh, this is so powerful. I've given it to you before, but you forgot, so I'm going to give it to you now. Look what it said. The absence of fasting is the measure of our contentment with the absence of Christ. When I look at my life and see my life void of fasting, fasting says, what did Jesus just say? I'm here with them. I'm here with them so they don't need to fast. So when they do fast, I'll come with them. My presence will be with them. And so our absence of fasting is just simply our measure of being content with the absence of Christ. You'll be amazed, or maybe you won't, of how many people that serve God without God. 
You'll be amazed how many people preach about God and don't know God. You'll be amazed at the people that sang about God and don't know God. You'll be amazed, maybe you won't, of the people who have a form, I've already said it, a form of godliness but don't, but don't know him. But, when, but when, I, when I afflict myself, when I do what I need to do as it relates to pulling on his presence and his anointing and his spirit, you know why? Because his spirit, he says, can't no flesh glory in my presence. He, you know why? Because he said, in my presence, there's fullness of joy. He said, in my presence, there's righteousness, there's peace, and there's joy where his presence and see it. So whenever it is I don't experience those things, I can tell who's not fasting. I can tell who's not praying. Oh, you shouldn't judge nobody. That's what Tupac said. Only God can judge you. That was two, Tupac said that. But no, can I tell you? I know it's pop. I, I know it's pop. I get y'all every time. They be like, Tupac. Anyway, I know I know he said Machiavelli. I know, I know, I know. I know a little bit about I know a little bit about that thug fashion. I know a little bit about a little fact that y'all ain't gonna talk. But anyway, I heard it was the bomb. Got it going on. Anyway, but, 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 but yeah. I don't know nothing about that either, I guess. Uh, it's all right. Y'all say it for real, though. But, but, but no, you can, examine, <laughs> you can examine someone's life if there's no joy. He said, where the, where the presence of the Lord is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's righteousness, peace, and joy. When there's no joy, no peace, no righteousness, then maybe the spirit of God is not there. And Piper said, the absence of fasting is our measure of, no, of contentment without the presence of God. Let's, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, so let me talk about some right motives while we're fasting. So while fasting, we must have the right motives. Yeah, yes, we do. We got to have the right motives. Somebody say right motives. Right motives. While, while we're fasting, we got to have the right motives. Let's read, read 1 Kings 21 when we get a chance. It talks about Jezebel. She proclaimed a fast so she can kill somebody. She proclaimed the fast so she can take somebody land. Is why Jezebel proclaimed the fast. I am not to fast for my own selfish personal gain. If I'm fasting so I can get something from someone or trying to obtain something selfishly, I'm not fasting. I'm dieting. We, we don't. Look, look at my next point. We don't fast to obtain our own selfish desires. We don't fast to obtain our own selfish desires. That, that's not what God proclaimed to fast. That's what the people of God were doing. Read it when you get a chance. Go back and read Isaiah 58. And that's what he was saying. They were doing it for their own self-indulgement. They wanted God to see them. That's not why we fast. If you got something in your mind that you just got to have God do and you just need God to do and it's a selfish desire, a selfish ambition, that is not, that is not what fasting is about. You don't fast to force God's hand. You don't fast to make God do something. You don't fast to say, God, look at me. Now I need you to do that. That's not what, that's not what fasting is about. You can ask God to do whatever it is you, you want to do, but you can't demand him to do anything. Let, let me keep going. Look at Luke chapter 18. It's going to go another further. It says, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they, that they were righteous. And treated others with contempt. Verse 10. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Verse 11. The Pharisee standing by himself prayed thus. God I thank you that I'm not like other men. Extortionist, unjust, adulterous or even like this tax collector. Verse 12. Here it is. I do what? Fast twice a week. I fast twice a week God. I, I give tithes. Of all that I get. This brother was boasting about what he did for God. Verse 13 says, but the tax collector standing, standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me for I am a sinner. So this brother was, was hanging his hat on the fact that he was religious. And this is what people do with fasting times like this. And I refuse to let it happen here at Truth and Love. We take things that are right and we make them religious and we say, well, I do it this way and I do it that way and if you ain't doing it like this it's not right if you don't sing it the way I sang it it ain't right if you don't say it like this it ain't right if you don't fast this way if you don't just think that's not how we know that is a religious mindset it's not about religion and not about me got to do it this way got to do it that way got to do it that way but no it's him in us that's working in us and through us oh my friend look look what Jesus said in Matthew 6 16 he says when you fast stop looking sad like the hypocrites Oh, you've seen them. What's, what's, somebody walking there? what's wrong with you? 
Child, I'm fast. Y'all know Pastor got us on this. Guys on this fast. You see him, they, they have, whew, ain't comb the hair. And I know I did it on purpose. I did it on purpose. Ain't comb the hair. I don't know what she's she like. Fix yourself up, Pastor. Fix up. I, ain't, I can't share the broadcast. Your hair all messed up like that. Anyway, <laughs> what I'm saying, your hair all messed up. They all got the white mouth. They ain't put on no lotion. They don't know nothing. They just want somebody to ask them what's going on. You know how that. You have seen people that just want to look like they, they want somebody. To, you, you know you got people like that. They sit in the corner and they look sad and they just want somebody to ask them what's the matter what's wrong with you that's all been on Jesus said don't fast like the hypocrite he said they put on sad faces to make it obvious that they're fasting he said I can guarantee this true this look at this he said that will be their only reward whenever I do something just for somebody to pat me on the back whenever I do something just for somebody to say how deep I am and say how 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 passionate I am for the things of God God said that's the only reward that you're going to get I won't get no reward from God because my reward I was seeking was the approval of man oh but no I'm not fasting or doing any spiritual exercise or participating in any spiritual discipline be it fasting be it praying be it giving be it whatever I do I shouldn't do it for the applause of people but I'm to do it so God can know what it is that I'm doing I'm coming from a pure a pure heart we, we don't fast. Here, look at your paper. We don't fast to make ourselves look more spiritual than, in, than everyone else. We don't fast to make ourselves look more spiritual than everyone else. You know those super spiritual folk. They tell them, I fast three times a week. You know those super spiritual folk, they just want they just want to boast about what they do and how often they do it. That is not what fasting is about. Look at what this man of God said. I love him. Look what he said. Religious activity. Plus rude, obnoxious behavior is hypocrisy at its best. Whenever I'm just participating in a religious activity, that is just simply, that is just simply hypocrisy. Genuine fasting. Am I boring y'all? I feel like I'm boring y'all. Y'all, 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 y'all want to be chestnuts, roping over, flying something. Look, look. Genuine fasting is humbling myself before God. That's what genuine fasting is. It is humbling myself before God. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah 58 and 5. Genuine fasting is humbling myself before God. Is such the fast that I chose? Listen to what God says as he comes against the people of God and their religious activity. Is such the fast that I chose a day for a person to humble himself? Is it, is it to bow down his head like a reed or to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast, a day, and a day acceptable to the Lord? He said, that's not what I'm asking for you just to look humble. God wants us to be humble. Right. See, humility is not a look. Humility is not an po outward posture. Humility is a posture of the heart. Yeah. Humility is not you just saying all the right things and doing all the things you're supposed to do. But no, humility is something on the inside. I don't want you to look humble. I want you to walk humble before, before your God. Micah 6 and 8 says, he said, what have the Lord required and what is God showing? He said, he have shown thee, O oh man, to love justly, to walk humbly before thy God. We don't got to ask what God want. We can already know what God want. God want us to walk humbly before him in everything, everything we do. Let me keep going. Fasting and mistreating people don't go together. I said fasting and mistreating people don't, they, they don't go together. That's like, that's like oil and water. If you're fasting and you're still cussing folk out, you might as well go on and eat. <laughs> if you're fasting and you're still mean and still nasty and still vindictive and still when people walk off, you're rolling your eyes and you're cutting your eyes, yeah. folk and doing all, you might as well go ahead and eat. You're not fasting, you're on a diet. No, fasting and mistreating people do not go hand in hand. Look at verse 3 again, Isaiah 58 and 3. He says, Behold, you're seeking this after your own pleasure. He says, And oppress all your workers. Verse 4. He said, But he said, You fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with wicked fears fasting like yours this day will not make your voice be heard on high God said you're fasting and doing religious things but still treating people indifferently still looking down on people not helping anybody he said this is not the fast I'm looking for but when I fast I'm to be better when I fast I'm to love on I'm to love on somebody it's not, it's, not, it's not on your notes, but you can write it in if you desire. It's on the screen because uh, we're just talking about what fasting is not. We don't fast to see the downfall of someone else. 
We don't fast to see the downfall. You can slide it right above Acts 23 because that's what we're going at next, but not yet. We don't fast to see the downfall of someone else. You, you, can't, you can't fast to see somebody lose their job. They laughed at me, so God, get them back. You can't fast because you got caught doing something you didn't have no business doing, and you want somebody else to feel the, the wrath and the pain of what you felt, so you're going to fast for, the, for that downfall. And we seem, we seem so oblivious to that, like, oh, no, how could that happen? Uh, just look at the Bible. <laughs> look at Acts 23 and 12. It says, when, it says, when it was day, the Jews made a plot and bound themselves, bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. They fasted and said, we're not going to eat and we're not going to drink until we see the downfall of Paul. We don't fast to see the downfall of other, others. I, I don't care who has hurt you. I don't care how offended you are. I don't care what it, you don't pray and fast and ask God to get them. You don't, you don't, you don't fast and pray and ask God, well, they, I, want, I just want to know how I felt. That's not, that's not what the people of God do. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, there were more than 40 who made this, this conspiracy. That's not fasting and praying. You, you're operating in witchcraft is what it is you're doing when you're plotting on someone's, someone's life. But this is what fasting is. That's all the negative, some of the negative. Now let's deal with some of the, some of the positive, and we're going to blaze up out of here. Genuine fasting destroys yokes. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you have a, a habit, maybe you have a vice, maybe you have something that you just can't shake, something you can't go get over, something you can't seemingly get that breakthrough in. This is what fasting does. Genuine fasting, it doesn't break yokes because if you break something, if you got a MacGyver on your team, he can put it back together. No, but no, genuine fasting breaks yo. It destroys, it destroys yo. Look at Isaiah 58 and 6. It says, is not this the fast? This is what God said. This is the fast I chose not that mess y'all doing he said to loose the bonds of wickedness to undo the straps of the yoke to let the oppressed go free to break every yoke God said man you're fasting and you're not free from some things you're not fasting if you're fasting and you're not going from faith to faith and from glory to glory God said you're not fasting if you're fasting and your life isn't better and your walk with him isn't more enhanced and you can't hear him clearly and you're not speaking the word of God clearly then my friend you're not fasting but what God is saying I want to come in your life to destroy a yoke this is what need to be your purpose and your intentionality when we're going on this 21 days of fasting and consecration I'm saying God whatever's in me that God don't go along on this journey whatever's in me God that you're not proud of whatever is in me that you don't like God I want you to destroy it anybody want to step out on faith and say God I want you to destroy it I want you to loose the bands that, that, that the enemy have set up over, over my life that's what fasting does it is to destroy yo verse 7 we getting there it says it is not the, is it not to share your bread with the hungry you know why you're going to have, I don't, I don't got nothing to give nobody. You're going to have something to give somebody. You know why? Because you're not buying lunch yourself. Y'all let go help me. So you're not buying lunch for nobody. So you're going to take your lunch money and be a blessing to somebody else. And you ought to look out for something. See, to fast, God is helping me to be able to help somebody else. That is what the kingdom of God looks like. He said, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless and the poor up to the church? Say that okay. He said, Bring the homeless and the poor into your house. Y'all go heaven. Take them to the church. I think Pastor the cop there. He'll give them $20. No, you give them $20. Look, look what it said. It says, It says, When you when you see the naked, it didn't say go to the dome, it said you cover him. Come on here. It, 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 it is not for you to hide. I love what the message translation says. Read him and get a chance. Verse 7 says, It's not for you to hide from your own relatives. It's not for you to hide if you know people need your help. You don't hide from them or send them to somebody else to help them no you help them that's what we do when we send people to church we don't come we don't we don't drag people in here Ray Ray and Pookie drag them in and now flop them down and say get them pastor no you get them in the car come on here you talk to them you pray for them. come on there I ain't even be looking at me crazy for an hour come on here no you do you you get them you get them then anyway <laughs> Let me tell you about these sevenfold promises of fasting. This is where we've already hit this. We've hit this. I preached this chapter already about three or four times this year, but it just, it's good to last drop. Y'all bump that up because I feel my, my, my feel my amens freezing out on me. They're freezing out on me. Uh, so so they, they're cold. They, don't even, they can't say amen. They just, uh, they're trying to, but uh, it's, just, it's just cold. 
Now, let me give you these sevenfold promises of what, what this fasting is going to do. This is what I want you to posture your heart. If you, if you fell asleep, wake up now so you can get these promises. And then you go back to sleep when we finish. Look. So look, look what genuine fasting brings about accelerated deliverance. This is, what, this is what genuine fasting does. It brings about accelerated deliverance. Look, look at Isaiah 58 and 8 again. I went a little backwards there by mistake. Look, look at Isaiah 58 and 8 again. It says, then shall your light break forth like the dawn. He says, then shall your light. When I posture myself properly, he said, then shall my light bring forth light. That, that's indicative of deliverance. See, we walk in darkness, those are folks that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. But whenever it is that we come into the light, we're being delivered. So he said, the light is going to spring forth, meaning I'm going to be delivered. Oh, my God. This is what genuine fasting does. It brings about deliverance. Look at, look at uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Look what it says. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, here it is, awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. There are some of our spiritual life, when we look at our spiritual life, it is asleep at best. It's dormant at best. It's stagnant at best. Oh, but what genuine fasting does, it brings about accelerated deliverance. The way I'm going to wake up my spirit. I'm going to wake up my prayer life. Come on, I'm going to go and I'm going to grab my Bible, I'm grab my study note, and I'm gonna blow the dust off over, and I'm gonna wake up, and I'm gonna rise, I'm gonna shine, and I'm gonna give God some glory. I'm gonna walk in my th and the things of God in such a way that where I'm purposeful in my walk with God, and it brings about accelerated deliverance. Look at look at verse eight. Verse eight again says, "And your healing, that's the only part I want, and your healing shall spring up." Speedily, this, this is where we extract our gear of acceleration from. My healing will spring up speedily. Look, look, what, look, look, but look, what, look what this is. Genuine fasting brings about accelerated holistic healing. Genuine fasting brings about an accelerated holistic healing healing my healing this healing is not just talking about a physical healing this is talking about being mentally healed this is talking about being emotionally healed this is talking about in every area of my life when I'm fasting and I'm purposeful and I'm doing what I need to do and I'm coming to God and I'm genuinely asking him to help me say so he'll heal me in every area of my life maybe you got some pain from your past maybe you've been hurt maybe you've been abused maybe you've been dropped maybe you've been raped maybe you've been molested Maybe people have walked out on you. Maybe people have offended you. Maybe you have, he has all types of things going on in your mind and in your head. This is what this fast is doing. And this is what you need to do. You got to be serious about it. You got seven days to get serious about it and say, God, I want to be healed. I don't want to always be talking about my pain. God, I want to be healed. I want to keep on talking about my past. God, I want to be healed. I don't want to keep on leaving and leaning to the voices that I hear in my head. Oh, but God, I want to be whole. You said in your word in 2 Timothy 1 7, you have given me that you're not giving me the spirit of fear but you give me power you give me love and you give me the soundness of mind God I need you to help me so I can be whole oh I don't know about you I want God I don't want to patch through my walk with God I don't want God to patch me up but God I want God to heal me and I want to heal me holistically look at Isaiah 26 and 3 it say you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you this is what fasting will do this is what my mind praying and consecrating myself to him he said he'll keep me in mature complete peace perfect peace when my mind is on not when it's on Facebook not when it's on Snapchat not when it's on Instagram when my mind is stayed on him he said he'll keep me in perfect peace somebody say peace it's what it is. Shalom, completeness, soundness, being whole, intact, prosperity, to be at safety or oh, a state or the state of being safe or free from danger. This is what God wants. Not, not a physical place, but a spiritual place. The way I'm walking in completeness. I don't need a man to complete me. I don't need a woman to complete me. I don't need money to complete me. I don't need a car. I don't need a house. But no, I'm walking in my shalom. God said I can be complete. I can be whole. Everything's intact. I'm walking in prosperity. I know I'm safe because God has me right where I need to be. I'm going to pull on some holistic healing. Yeah. Woo, boy, you preaching. You preaching. Preach myself happy. Look, 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 look again. I'm almost done. Look at Isaiah 58 and 8. It says, it says your, your righteousness shall go before you. I've given this to y'all, but y'all forgot. Look, your righteousness shall go before you. Look what it says. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. 
Genuine fasting brings about accelerated protection. He says, my righteous, my, our righteousness will go before us. Our reputation will go before us. Then he says, the glory will be our rear guard. I don't know who you have on your trail. Somebody may be in hot pursuit. Somebody, you may have an enemy. You may have someone who doesn't like you. They want to see your demise. They're plotting your demise. Come on, I don't need nobody looking over my shoulder. I don't need anybody trying to help me and help me stop this and stop that. No, God said, I'll be your protector. Oh, Isaiah 54, 17 said, no weapon that's formed against me shall prosper. Oh, but we always stop right there. He said, every tongue that rise up against us in judgment, God has given us a power to condemn it. I don't care what he say. I don't care what she say. I don't care what they thought that they heard and all this stuff. I don't got to come just because somebody's saying something. God say going to give me protection. I go, oh, come on here. You'll never make it home if you throw a rock at every dog that bark at you. Oh, you'll never make it to your destination. Everybody that bites you. Everybody is, you'll never get your destination. But no, I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on marching. God, I heard Psalm 23 say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. When I'm, oh my God, I got to learn how to walk in my protection. Come on. I'm going to be done. Y'all finally going to wake up. I'm going to be done, though. I'm going to be done. I'm going to be in the hallway by the time y'all wake up. Look, look. Look at Isaiah 58, 9. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm there now. I'm there now. Look what it says. Then you should call. He said, you, then, then you shall call, and the Lord would answer. You shall cry, and he will say, here I go. Yes, sir. He said, he said you're going gonna to call on me, I'm going to answer you. You're going to cry, and I'm going to say, here I am. And look at this. Genuine fasting brings about accelerated access. I don't know who needs Access. Anybody, when you, you know, when you, when you, when you say for real, when you're loving God for real and you got down and you begin to talk to God, it seems like his presence is right there. And anybody when you when you when you've been walking and doing what you know you need to do, it seems as if that your prayers go. It's not you don't have to warm up. You don't got to try to get no, but no, it's it's, it's a, something about it's something about me posturing myself. It's something about me emptying myself of myself, and God fills me up. He gives me he gives me access. Yes, he does give me access. Look at Isaiah sixty five and one. He says, "I was ready to be sought by those who did not seek, who did not ask for me. I, I was ready to be sought." They didn't ask for me. I was ready to be found, but they didn't seek me. Don't let that be our testimony. Don't let God be waiting for us, but we never call on him. He said, I was waiting for you to come to me. I, I got a place, Moses. There's a place besides me, but you never pursued my glory. There's another place in me, but you never even tried. You were saved and satisfied. How, how many people are going to be in heaven and just happy to be in heaven. And then God is going to show us there was much, much more that I had for you. But, but you were just satisfied just being saved. No, I'm not satisfied just being saved. Thank God I'm going to heaven. But I, I, want, I want it all. I want everything that God has for me. Genuine fasting brings about accelerated reciprocity. Accelerated reciprocity. Yes, it does. Genuine fasting brings about accelerated reciprocity. Oh, we'll, we'll see in a moment. Isaiah 58 and 10. He says, and if you pour out. He said, that which, which you sustain, which he said, and if you pour out that wit, that, that got me at noonday too, that same with which, Lord have mercy, did it again and tripped me up again. Look, it said, and if you pour out that with which you sustain your own life for the hungry and to satisfy the need of the afflicted, look. Then shall your light rise in darkness and your obscurity and gloom become like the noonday. Here Isaiah said when you pour out something that you need to somebody who needed more, God said he's going to give you more back than what you poured out. He says he'll take your darkness and take your obscurity and take your gloom and let it be like the noonday. It's going to be reciprocity. It's going to be a divine exchange. That's what reciprocity. A divine exchange. God said you pour out, I'm going to give it back to you. You can't, you can't lose. We can't lose like that. Gen genuine fasting brings about accelerated provision. Accelerated provision. Yes, it is right here. We got one more to go. It says the Lord will guide you continually. Look at this. Giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. Good God. You will be like a well-watered garden. Like an ever flowing spring. This is what God speaks over our lives when we line. Read this chapter when you get a chance. I tell you, God says, I'll never run out. 
I'll be a well water. He, those things that I've lost, those things that have gone, those things that are being torn down. Come on, I, I don't know. I don't know who, where you are in your life, but God says he's going to give us accelerated provision. Whatever I need, it'll be there. He'll be Jehovah Jireh. Whatever I need, God said, I'll never let you be without. I'm going I'm to keep providing for you. Look, 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 look what else. Genuine fasting brings about accelerated restoration. Restoration. Look at verse 12. If you don't, if you don't get this, if this don't, if this don't get you, then I, I'm going to check your Holy Ghost. Let me, let me see ver, verse 12. I, Isaiah 58 and 12. We're doing a Holy Ghost check in the hallway. Look, Isaiah 58, 12. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach. The restorer of the streets to dwell in. Let me explain. Let me explain what Isaiah is saying. Because there's some areas in our lives that people have torn down. And I've torn down myself. There's some waste places. There's some desolate places. But God says he's going to restore. Oh, come on here. I hear Joel 2.25 says, I will restore unto you everything that the canker worm, everything that the palmer worm, everything that the caliber, everything that people and things have come to destroy. God said, I'm going to restore it. And that's what needs to be our intention now. That needs to be our focus. God, I need you to restore me. God, like never before. Come on, put your hands together. Give him some praise in here. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L-JAX, one word, T-I-L-JAX, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, Download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.